Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. Ron Phillips, Heather Marchant here. Yes. Hope you had a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, tree's still up. I know it is. (laughs) If you take it down the day after Christmas, that's a little intense. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. Mine'll, ours will be up for God knows how long. So, yeah. we, we just had, we had a friend, and we used to, um, used to have this thing, right, where we would text each other pictures of it still being up. And, really? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, how that's long us. have you lasted? How long? Oh, we yeah, way, way through January. And, really? Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was, oh, because it's a fake. Yeah, I it was ugly. It was ugly that year. And we just uh, do it now. I don't know why. Yeah, because we have real trees. So we have to get rid of them when the city, you know, has it available to dispose yeah. of them. And so it, it kind of makes you take it down. There's no exceptions. So, yeah. Well, we have, uh, I th- I, what I think we've been talking about this idea for quite a while. Heather. Yeah. Um, but I, I have been pretty open about my story. You know, I think you have too, Heather, just like we're pretty much open books about how everything, um, happens. And I, you know, one of the things that hits me pretty hard is, um, just how, just how much I hit the parent lottery and not everybody hits the parent lottery. It's true. So pretty, pretty blessed. But it's one of the things um, we were talking about wealth the other day and um, what what really is wealth. And it's a whole lot more than money. It's just, it's so much more than money. And to even just like change your mindset and think about that, because wow, I mean, I, I one example from my life is I've talked before that my husband's a psychologist, specializes with adolescents and kids and working he loves working with families that's his favorite so when the kid is struggling the parents come in and they're like help fix my kid and my husband meets with them and is like so let's talk about the family dynamic and why the kid's doing what they're doing most often right it's not this isolated kid problem right and so in my house when i tell my husband or i vent to my husband and i'm like man i totally screwed up on this today as a parent I didn't handle that well, that situation, that conversation, whatever. Um, I lost my cool. um, And he always turns to me and says, well, I'll say I'm the worst. And he's like, oh, nope, nope. You're definitely not, not the worst. Met one worse than that today. So, (laughs) So, um, So I guess the takeaway is that winning the parent lottery is a real thing. I mean, think of your opportunity because you were born into a family with a solid support system, just that alone, you know? I think that that a lot of people when, uh, so I hear at masterminds a lot that people want to leave a legacy. And when they talk about their legacy, mostly they talk about the money and their businesses and everything they're creating. And I was just watching this new show. My wife and I, we watch a lot of shows. Um, And this was really good, but it was about, is about this oil family and how they built this dynasty oh. and yeah, the family was a complete mess. Wait, I mean, they were called? a complete mess. Uh, I knew you were going to ask me that because I can't remember. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to Google it. Keep going. Tell us. Anyway, this, the, the point where well, the whole thing blew up and completely spoiler alert, but the family was, a, I mean, they were just a, a, a mess, um, yeah. but super wealthy, you know? And, um, I think I've talked on, on the show about my, my friends who, um, have had similar things, you know, inside of their families, which made me realize that, you know, we, Heather, we've been really, um, financially blessed, but I look back at my, my upbringing and, you know, my, my, we were never, uh, well off and, and for a lot of, I think for a lot of our lives, you would say that we were, you know, definitely not that. Uh, and, but we were well off in so many other ways that made so much more difference. Uh, the, and I mean, 
really well off. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of those because yeah. passing along money is easy. I was just meeting with the uh, attorneys, setting up a whole bunch of structure to make that happen. Um, and you got to update that occasionally. So that's what we were doing. And it's complicated. There's a bunch of structure. It's only complicated because the government complicates it, you know. But once you put the structure in place, it's it's easy to pass money along. That's really not that hard. You can hire people. They can do that. You can't really hire people to help really a whole lot with the rest of the legacy. Yeah. So I, I don't think I was given financial luxury as a kid. But I had a I had an incredible home life. I was given so much more than a you know than financial luxury. Um, and I think when you boil it down, Heather, I, I owe my financial luxury today, my relationship, uh, all of my relationships, my spiritual life, all of that to my my parents, because I look back at how I came to the financial place that I am. And it was because of the things that they taught me growing up. Yeah, for sure. And the, it, I, the book we were reading recently, I know both of us were reading, talks about how you can leave money, but if you don't prepare that generation to receive the money in a way that they have core values and know what to do and giving back and all of that stuff, they're totally unprepared to receive. And I thought that was really interesting, something I hadn't really considered. Um, I mean, it makes so much sense that I don't know why I hadn't considered it, but that that almost leaves a better legacy in some ways than just some dollars <laughs> in oh, a lot of ways. hundred percent, hundred percent. Because if you leave a whole bunch of money behind and then everybody's a mess in second mm -hmm. generation, third generation, fourth generation, because you didn't teach them anything else. I mean, what good is yeah. it? And then we've talked on the show before about just, just first generation, like our generation, if we chase money and all we do is chase money and we blow up our, our lives in mm -hmm. every other way, what, what good is it? Yeah. And this takes that to the next level. And, um, you know, my, my parents taught me, when you think about our core values that we have in the company, Heather, they're yeah. directly related to my growing up. Yeah. I mean, fun. We are, one of ours is fun. We always had fun growing up. And as a matter of fact, we were encouraged very strongly by my mom, uh, to go figure out how to have fun because my, I'm, I am one of seven children. So my mom, uh, just, just for that deserves like all yeah. the medals in the world, but <laughs> we would come anytime we'd come and say we were bored. Well, she'd just be like, well, how can you possibly be bored? There's so many things to do. And then she started listing them off before, you know, it, we were outside doing one of the many things. And mm -hmm. then we would come up with our own and we would, man, we would be outside all day being creative, having fun. And we were encouraged to make our own fun. So Which our fun didn't you were depend on anybody else. Yes. Yes. And you're a very creative person. So laying potentially a foundation for you to open up that side of your brain, you know, problem solve, figure yeah. out what you're going to do. And rather than, I mean, I, my main goal is to just try to limit screen time in my family because I think it's so important for, you know, development like that to be able to just get out and have fun. And my growing up was quite different than yours as far as finances are concerned. My parents had very good money but I had very frugal parents, which is kind of a unique combination. <laughs> um, and yeah. maybe, maybe that's partly why there were eight kids in my family. And so one upping you, Ron, there you go. But, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I think that's part of it, right? We never really, I remember going to McDonald's like once twice ever and thinking I was going to lose my mind because we never really ate out because my dad was like, this is a fortune. There's it, so many. Well, I, Hank, time out. It is a fortune. I mean, it's I like you've taken a small company to McDonald's or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, right? It's true. Yeah, it's that true. didn't happen to my family either. Yeah. Uh, not very much because... It, it, it literally is. It's a small fortune uh, yeah. to, to take that many people out to dinner. 
And I would say the other, I mean, your core values, I would say one of our core values in our home, if I, I've never thought about it till you mentioned it, would be hard work. I mean, that was mm-hmm. just, that was like expected and it was, you're a part of the team type of thing. I remember one memory that popped up when you were talking about being outside is my parents bought this big, beautiful house in New York. My dad worked in Manhattan, had a very well paying, good paying job but we bought a brand new construction home. It was the biggest home we'd lived in. And we were just like, this is a mansion. It wasn't, but you know, it was huge. Um, And the yard was unfinished, two and a half acres. A lot of it wooded, but there was a lot of, they were gonna just spray grass or something, seed or something. But we had to go out and pick up rocks. We had our bucket and we had to go out and pick up rocks in the yard on acres of land in order to plant the grass. And that was just like, yeah, that's what you're doing. Like it's, it's Saturday, get outside, get your bucket. <laughs> I mean, and we had this, I mean, it's funny because from the world's perspective, my dad was an executive at a very large corporation corporation. And he had this big, beautiful home. And it was, there was no, no house cleaner ever, which is mind blowing to me. Cause I have house cleaners. Cause I just don't know how people can survive and work, but we would have these company parties people these really wealthy people from new york city would come to our house for a christmas party every year and we helped bring food to all the guests and we cleaned the house beforehand there was no no help right so i mean i literally i literally had a job starting at nine years old and i'm pretty sure that the paper office like broke some kind of rule or law (laughs) or something to hire me Uh, i'm i'm almost positive that you couldn't hire a kid at nine but they did I had a paper route since I was nine and you know, my brother and I used to, I mean, we, we would go and do our paper route. And the crazy thing is that my, my parents encouraged us to do this. I think unknowingly that we were learning how to run a business at a very, very young age because we had to collect the money. I can't even imagine at nine. I mean, I, I had some time we had these little tabs on our thing and we had to go and you'd rip the tab off and give it to them as a receipt when they paid you like the whatever three dollars it was for the paper, 250 or whatever it was. And I had some people who had these tabs that were like, <laughs> I was just like, why would these people pay me? Anyway, that's beside the point. But yes, hard work. They probably paid you because I mean, a little nine year old kid coming to collect money. Are you kidding? Like it's um the movie the classic musical you probably don't even know but newsies i where guarantee you i don't know that they're selling papers and they have the little boy like he's they're, they're like you're going to be our best selling newsie so and then he sings and then he breaks into tune <laughs> and then he sings yeah. it's true and then, and then you lost me heather that was it because that doesn't happen in real life no one goes to collect and then when they get paid they 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 break into song nobody does that oh in my family my kids probably would but yes you're, uh, that's actually true that's actually true <laughs> and it would be hilarious i would love it if they were on my porch doing it it would it would be hilarious. i never did that though that's so awesome. i mean uh, what else uh, i think tons and tons and tons of love i was taught the mm-hmm. value of people um yeah. Not all people, everybody, um, especially yeah. people who had it worse off than us, health wise, sure. financially, and in every other way, f- familially. Is that a word? I just made yeah, that up. I think it is. I, I'm more alone with it. Um, you know, I was I was taught to treat everybody with respect, and um, I was also yeah. taught to have a, a strong spiritual life, which yeah. was incredibly valuable. It helps to keep people grounded. I was taught to serve other people like you're picking up rocks. That was serving the family. But we we went and did that stuff for other people that I didn't even know. And sometimes begrudgingly, we went and did it for other people. But um, you did it. And it was like an expectation that this is who we are. It's like, you you know, you're you're a Phillips. This is what you do. You know, we just serve people. That's what. And, you know, here's the other really cool thing is that one of the things that came from from not having a lot is that people served us sometimes, which was, you know. I mean. We loved it when we got hand me down clothes from the from the rich kids, you know, so we'd actually Mm -hmm. have, you know, cool clothes and stuff like that. But somebody served us when that happened, right? Somebody yeah. was um, serving us. And so we learned from both sides what it meant to serve people. 
Yeah. And what an unbelievable, unbelievably valuable lesson that is. For sure. Um, this has been something I've been thinking about and talking to my family about since reading that book is what my family's core values are. And I've talked to my kids about it. And it's really cool to see what comes out of it, because I would definitely say service and faith would have been like a big part of my family um, as well. And I think about um, the church that I grew up in is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and there's no lay ministry, right? So we gave talks and stuff in church. Like we got up at the pulpit and were sharing our thoughts about the, you know, the Bible or, you know, so it was really, really um, terrifying for me. Like totally, completely <laughs> terrifying. Did, you know, I didn't even really <laughs> think about that, but that's a great way to learn public speaking. You just forced yes. to do it. Yes. And I, for me, that's how it was. Um, I had one time they told me that my whole outfit, like my dress was shaking. Like they could see me shaking. I was that scared. But it was a core value in my house that we do hard things. Like we, we are, that's just who we are, you know? And so that was, I, that is a cornerstone for me though. And I think about that often because I can sit and chat with you and I mean, present in front of groups of several hundred people online or whatever. And it's not debilitating. In fact, I yeah. kind of get a little excited. I mean, it's always a little nerve wracking, but like excited where because of my parents encouraging me like, yeah, it's okay. You're going to be okay. Like encouraging you to do things that are uncomfortable, super super cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, you know, as I look back to you, my, my dad started a couple of different businesses and I learned just how much work that involves. Mm -hmm. And I also learned, um, about how the buck stops 100% stops with him on those businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. I always looked up to that. I thought that was really cool that he did that. Um, and that you even were aware of that. You know well, I mean? and you know, on when he first started him, only thing I was aware of was that seven of us had to be like silent because he ran his office out of our uh, house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just think that through for a second. There's no way <laughs> you can keep seven kids quiet. It's it's literally impossible. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. in the summer, they would just like we would just be outside because you, you. Yeah. You can't keep us quiet. It was impossible, but that's, I think that's how we learned. And that's how I earned, um, learned own it. Right. You, <laughs> if yeah. you did it, you owned it. If you didn't do it, you owned it. I mean, you owned it. Right. Yeah. And, and everybody and everybody in the family knew it too. It wasn't like mm. you were going to get away with it. If yeah. You didn't do it. Um, but the other cool thing I, I think you said earlier, uh, in your own way, Heather, is that we were part of a team. Like we, we stuck together as a family. The only, the only people who could pick on somebody in my family was people in my family. You didn't get to pick on people in the family if you weren't in the family. That's, you just didn't, that's not how it went down. Yeah, that's so interesting. I think, I think that is so important and it's stuff that I take for granted a lot as I, you know, have, I have young kids pretty, I mean, they're all under 12, so pretty young and I sit and think about, okay, what are our core values and how am I going to actually, because I can say that's a core value of our family, but if my kids don't experience that, because you saying, I knew that the buck stopped with my dad, like how you, how your kids know that, you know what I mean? You have to embody yeah, that you know what? at a level. And here's the other thing is your kids know way more than you think they do. Yeah, that's probably true. And there, so if, if you don't, if you don't think through what you're teaching, you're because you're teaching. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things about the, the, uh, you know, our integrity, our core value of integrity. My mom and dad were just, they were just honest. Well, mm -hmm. I say were, they, they are just honest people. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I remember learning that multiple times because I I'm creative enough that I could, you know, tell the truth and still not tell the whole truth. Right. And, and it's like slide by. <laughs> But never really, it never really slid by very well, you know. And and I remember having, you know, several times where I can remember that's not the truth because it's not the whole truth. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, but what I said was the truth. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. That's not the truth <laughs> because you didn't tell the whole truth. <laughs> but those are things that were taught 
specifically taught to us. Mm-hmm. Integrity was a huge deal and the family name was a huge deal. So if you're out there and you're not toe in the line, you're making the family look bad. You're, mm-hmm. you're disrespecting your, your family's name. And we just didn't do that. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's not true. There were seven of us. Sometimes we did do that, but we always owned it afterwards. I guarantee <laughs> you that. Um, but, but but you thought about it, right? I'm sure you were like, oh man, like after the fact, because you, that was something that was. Sometimes after the fact, I only, you. I only felt bad because I knew that my dad knew and I was going to get in big, big mm-hmm. trouble when he got home <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes the lesson lands like that. That's the other thing too, is that I think as parents, we have to understand that sometimes the lesson does land like that, but that's okay because it landed. And at some point, you know, some point I'll pick that up in business and I'll be like, now, now we just got to tell them what's going on. I just had a conversation today with, with somebody about that. Just tell everybody exactly what's going on. Good, bad, ugly. And then tell them what you're doing to fix it if it's broken. Yes. Yes. That's it. Just own it. Yes. And it's and everything will work out better for you. I promise. That's just the way it works. In every area of life. <laughs> you know. So oh. I, I think Heather, like it comes down, we talk a lot about financial on the show, but the financial piece of my life at least wouldn't be here without all these other pieces. Or at least if I did have it, I would be more, I would probably be a douchebag because I, I didn't have the foundational principles that my, that I learned from, and, and not just from my parents, but a lot from my parents, but from coaches and, you know, church leaders and, you know, boy scout leaders and all of these different people that poured into me and helped me become, um, you know, a decent human being who's trying to pass along all of these other things. And so it was really cool. We read, I had Heather read this book too. It was really cool. Maybe we'll try to get these guys on and and talk to us. But um, the cool thing about that book is that they talked about the money side, right? You have to talk about the money side. Like, how do you pass all of this along? How do you create a family office and pass it along? But when you're doing that, how do you not screw everything else up? Yeah because you just didn't care to teach anybody about anything that goes along with the money because it's it's the least important piece of all of it. And for me, I I love this time of year to sit and think about these things because I'm going to be with my family, right? And I'm going to take the opportunity to thank my parents for some of the things we've talked about today. We just don't know how long, I mean, my parents are fairly young and healthy. (laughs) They had kids really, really young, but still, um, just taking the opportunity to, to thank them for it. Cause man, being a parent is pretty thankless in so many ways. So I guess that's my, my challenge and take away, I guess, at the same time for myself. So, yeah, I think, um, at this time of year, let's all just think about it and, you know, I have some um, I have some friends growing up who growing up who didn't have as loving of a home as I did, um, mm-hmm. who who you know have made an, un, an incredible life for themselves and for their family. And I bet as you look back, even if you weren't blessed to be in a home like Heather or I, um, that there were still lessons that were taught and things that were passed on and things that we. And like all of us are trying to improve, right? We're trying to do better than the mm-hmm. previous generation. And so hopefully that's happening purposefully for all of us. Yeah. And um, so I just encourage everybody. It's a great time of year, like Heather said, to just sit and be quiet and think through, what do I want my legacy to be? And that business should be the last possible thing. But what do you want your legacy to be? Because I'm I'm definitely thinking about that. And I'm young, Heather. I don't know about I mean Heather's yeah. younger than me, and I'm young. So but I'm thinking <laughs> well, I'm about it because young. now now's the time to think about it, or even you know, before you have kids, but what what legacy are you leaving? And not just to your children, but what legacy are you leaving to the to the world and to the people around you? Uh it's a great time of year to think about that. Yeah, for sure. Love so it. go 
I guess this week, then get out there and make that happen. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.